this next poet, before we bring him on our feature tonight, is like a son to me. He's brilliant. And he has an extraordinary command of language and a love of language. And he's like a billiard player with cats, to quote him. But think about a great billiard shot bouncing off the cushions with a specific objective to have touch of the three balls, let alone the rails. And that's what Christopher Pegasin does in his poetry. It's a wonderful trip. I was very proud to be part of these editions. The first is Life's Jejun Halls, or Thoughts on the Shuddering of the Generational Chassis. I guess so you can see that. Which was then subsequently followed by Thoreau de Siderata. These are amazing collections. I highly recommend their investigation. Christopher Peek is in. Would you grace us, sir? Thank you, Hilton. In on December 18th, 2019, I was blessed with a new nephew, and I wrote this for him. His name is Edward, but his nickname is Cheerio because when he had his first um, sonogram, the technician said, oh, he's just a little Cheerio. Phases for Cheerio. The evidence of suffering is inadmissible in the court of archangels, and thus man crawls tentatively out of the womb of the earth. A new beginning comes from the origin of all life, a future that cannot be predicted by any soothsayer. A royal name portends adventure from the hilt of the sword to the tip of the blade. It's up to you, little one, to fill the storybook with faces and names and memories. Through all the phases of the moon, through every season, each decade of the millennium, you will bravely chase your shadow down the fairy tale brick boulevard. Like a pen that suddenly appears to jot down the heartaches and aspirations of an entire race, the clean slate of a new mind will be there to record the goings on of the surface of humanity and to annotate it with the innocence and wisdom of a newborn sea, ready to lap gently over the beach of time and leave its tiny footprints. Yeah. The antiseptic properties of tears. One. I stood atop the grandest mountain, and what a view there would have been if only there had been light to see by. Clutching the breast of Mother Earth, entreating for mercy, I wait in the hallowed halls of learning for the shadow puppet of a snake to creep around the corner. Nothing looks the same as in the movies, and the images are all distorted. There are some puzzles that have no solution. As much as the tortured mind tries to wrap itself around the numbers and logic, the answer will remain always elusive. Two, let love carry you away. Let the blood-stained river flood your doorstep. Let the search for contact take you to the base of the pyramid, where every note of every chord cries out for a helping hand. There's nothing to lose but life itself, and life is lost already every time an empty house makes itself a soundboard for a soul's yearning, every time the candle blows out in the merciless wind of the north. Three. Awakening from oblivion, having slept the years away, I find myself inventing new vocabularies to describe these suburbs coated in glaciers. Every certainty crumbles into lint, and no one knows for sure which stories the rain will bring from tomorrow's clouds. True darkness is not a lack of light, but a lack of love. The blank sky challenges us to find meaning, 
to insert syllables into the poem which we are all writing together. All we can count on for certain is the disintegration of the steel beams that have held up this gray city and shepherded it into the new age as it is written by the historians of the Fen. Here, here. The Crow. There is violence inside the cranium. Thoughts and worries convulse like dreams in a butter churn, and one dons winter coat to wander down the cobblestone alleyway. Each snowflake, tortured yet proud in its uniqueness, joins the avalanche that sifts slowly through the sky to gather on houses and churches whose chimneys and spires reach toward the heavens, begging, beseeching, imploring. Oh, let us stand cavalier, pushing into the new spring like a train rounding a curve and emerging at last from the fog. The crow stands on the eaves of the corner building. In her corvid genius, she astutely pities the men who trudge below. Matters of the sky are far more profound. Maneuvers no longer limited by those two profane dimensions which the flightless traverse. The possibility of moving upwards and downwards reveals to the birds a frame of knowledge that humans can never access. The crow flies away. The new day will come and with it hope, but the citizens of this earth are forever doomed to be stuck in the snowstorm that lurks like clocks falling from the sky, sounding hour after hour until they hit the pavement and shatter into 2,000 pieces. The land between dimensions, one, the Kleinamine soul. A warm blanket wrapped around the soul comforts one's grievances. When the stars are cruel and clouds inscrutable, one can slip away to that land between dimensions and coat iniquities with treacle. Upon awareness, no enjoyment is feasible, for this is a euphoria one cannot hold. It slips through the fingers like dust in the attics and cellars of knowledge. There is only the paradox of possessing the unpossessable, of knowing intimately the nature of black matter in that infinitesimal moment between light and dark. Two, the marble heart. All time began the day I met you. Everything before was a soup of protozoa and inchoate forms, poets trying to convey meaning with unevolved alphabets that could never tell the truths they so longed to tell. I do not know how many months or years have passed. Your image cannot be taken for granted when you appear so seldom, unlike the marble heart which the sheep of the herd perpetually borrow from as they live their lives written out by the ordinary priests who will not deign to bless me. Three, the ending road. There may be nothing beyond the cliff, but damned if that will stop me from walking. The abyss stretches cavernously as I prepare to make an imitation of swimming through the air, kicking and punching nothingness, watching the world descend toward heaven, distance increasing as I fall further down. I fade away as I am gradually forgotten, but I still hold the scepter shining brightly in my hands, a memory of the gone universe. Even as nothing prevails over the cosmos, a dim bulb eliminates the lighthouse of my mind that insists on shining with the anamnesis of a world that was too beautiful to go on. Mm. And this is my last one. This has an epigraph. Broken. She lives with a broken man, a cracked polystyrene man who just crumbles and burns, Radiohead. I am truly a broken man, popsicle stick skeleton collapsing, Glue melting as I hide in the chimney, breathing smoke. You fell victim to the untrustworthiness of photographs. The eyes you saw were fabricated, the mouth, nothing this world has ever known. I have been deprived of the earth's last dance. No partner to walk down the street with and hold my hand as we defy apocalypse. I must sweep all friends and lovers from the kitchen floor, find a quiet life in the country sustain myself on goat mud, milk, and pe peasant bread. The pressure is too much. I play the same games every night to pass the time, 
as I wonder whether those flowers were imaginary. Did you deliver them? The revolution refuses to happen. Momentum extinguished on the locomotive. Peons staying home and bound to the king rather than risk their lives at the barricade. The pieces of my soul I shattered in the field, but someday they will coalesce way up in the sky, so high you can barely see them. Then everyone will know of my story if they look very closely through their spiritual binoculars. Perhaps someone will even write it down. Thank you for listening.